Hello my dear doers, welcome back to my tutorial. In this video, we will create a new Hedgery Date field widget using an external library. And this is the best source I found. What I do like also here is that you can switch between Hedgery and Gregorian format. Basically, you just need to add the letter I to the day, month, and year to identify that this is an Islamic format. Okay, so let's get started. First, let's check the GitHub repo and scroll down to check the instructions. As you can see, we need to install three JavaScript libraries, the two of which is already used by Odoo, the jQuery, and Moment. So we only need to install the Bootstrap Hedgery Date Picker. We also need the Bootstrap and Bootstrap Date Picker CSS library, but Odoo already has it, so we don't need to import them as well. Let's then open the dist folder, JS, and open the minified version. Let's copy, and by the way, I will be using the same module used in my previous tutorial. Let's first create a new folder, H3, and create a new file, bootstrap h3 date picker .js, and paste the code. And that's all we need. Since we are going to create a new field widget, Let's then create two files which are datehedgerefield.js and datehedgerefield.xml. Under the JS file, let's declare all the module. The first thing we need to import will be the registry to register a new field widget. Next will be the load.js to load the bootstrap hedgery date picker library. Next will be the standard field props to get existing field values and update records easily. Lastly, it will be the component on will start and on mounted from old. All right, we are ready to create it. Let's create a new class date history field that will extend all component. For now, let's add a setup method and add a console log. This is a history date picker. Then let's define the template and name it by the module name, which is datetimecalendar.datehedgerfield, and create it right away. Let's declare XML and templates. Inside it, create a new template and name it by the name we added in the component. Make sure to add all is equal to one. For now, let's just add an input field with type text and a class O input. Next, Let's define the field props by adding all the standard field props needed which will allow us to easily save whatever values in our input field. Otherwise, you need to manually do all the API calls. Next, let's define the display name which is date hedgery field. Then we also need to add the supported field types which will be the date. Finally, let's register this new field widget by calling the registry under the category fields and calling the add method. Let's name it date hedgery and pass the class date hedgery field as the value. For this to work, we need to inherit any date field in the sale order. Activate developer tools to see the field name and let's choose the validity date. Going back, let's create new folder views and inside that, create a new file sale order.xml and inherit the sale order form view by targeting the validity date by adding an attribute widget is equal to the new field we created, which is date history. Before we try, let's make sure we added this file in the manifest file. We also need to add the sale order.xml under views and add sale in the dependency. Restart Odoo go back and upgrade our module. We got an error. We should not add the date picker external library inside the components folder. So let's create a new folder lib under the src folder and move this file. Go back and reload. 
Now there's no issue. Open the sale order, inspect, and as you can see on the lags, our new field widget has been activated. Now let's try to load hugely date picker under the setup method by calling the on will start lifecycle method since this is the best part to load assets or any API before the component will be rendered to the DOM. Let's use async await and call the load.js method and add the hitchry date picker path. Check if this is working or not. Let's go back to the documentation and copy the sample code. Since this is a jQuery code, we need to call this method under the onMounted lifecycle method to make sure that the template has been loaded already. But we need to add an ID to our input field which will be a picker as the target element in the JS code. Go back and reload. Try to click and there you go. The date picker is working fine and we can switch between history and Gregorian calendars. The next thing is we need to format it to day, month, and year. Going back to the documentation, let's scroll down to the format and as you can see, we can define both Gregorian and Hijri format. Let's copy this code and paste. Let's make the day and month two digits. Go back and copy the code for Hijri format. And the same, we need to make the day and month two digits. Go back and reload. Select a date. And yes, the format is working fine. Let's try Gregorian and it's working fine as well. Now that the format is done, we are now ready to save it in the database. For this to work, we need to get an onChange event for the date picker. If we check the documentation by scrolling at the bottom, there's a custom event which is db.onChange to get the input value. So let's copy this code and paste after the date picker method. Remove other codes and just simply console lag the date. Go back and reload. And there you go, we got a hitch date object. So now we can now call this .props.update method to save this in the database. However, this object is not pertaining already to the component but rather to the current element. But don't worry, you can easily solve that by adding a new variable self which is equal to this and then replace it with self and this will also work. However, let's try the other option without using jQuery code. Let's remove this code and under our template, let's add an event listener which is on blur. Well, we can choose on change since it has been disabled by the date picker already. Basically, this blur event will be triggered the moment you lost focus on the element. We are going to pass the event object here so we need to use an arrow function and call the method on blur which we will be creating afterwards. Then pass the event. Going back to the component, let's then define a new method on blur with e as a parameter. For now, let's just add a console lag to the input value by calling e.target.value. Go back and reload. Click and choose any date. As you can see, we got the date value. Now, before we can save it in the database, we need to format this date to a Luxon date since that is a default format used by Odoo. Let's then import date time from Luxon and define a new constant variable date is equal to date time and use from format method which will accept the date as a string value and the correct date format. In this case, we need to pass e the target that value and the format will be dd, mm, and for wise. This is sometimes confusing since we are using two different date time libraries which are moment and luxon. Now we are ready to call this that props that update and pass the date value which is already converted to Luxon date. Go back and reload the page. Select any date. Then try to save. 
There you go. We don't have any issues. To verify if we save the correct date, go back to our code and under the setup method, let's console log this.props.value. Go back and reload the page. All right, we got the correct date value. But notice that the date field is empty. This is because we just initialized this history date picker to this input field. To solve that, let's declare a new getter method formatted value and simply return the same code in the onBur method, but instead of from format, we need to change it to to format. We also need to change it to this.props.value since this is already a Luxon date and remove the first parameter. Now in the template, Let's add t at value is equal to the getter method created. Go back and reload. All right, the date is showing already. Let's solve some issues here. For example, the date is empty. We should not receive any errors. Going back to our code, let's add an if statement to onBlur method and only update it if there's a date value. Otherwise, just add a false value. We do the same thing in the getter method, only render it if there's a props value. Otherwise, just render an empty string. Go back and reload. Remove the date. Click save. And yes, it's working fine. So now we are ready to use it in all existing fields. Let's try to use it in the date order and commitment date. Go to the sale order form view, duplicate this code, and change it to date order and commitment date. Then under the supported times, let's add date time as well. Go back and upgrade the module. Go to sales. And why it's not working? It's because we are targeting only a single element, which means only the very first element will get initialized for the history date picker. To solve this issue, let's create a new variable history date picker ID, which is equal to zero. Then under the setup method, create a new class field history date picker ID, which is equal to a template literal history date picker underscore and pass the variable we defined outside this class and increment it by one. This will create a different ID for each field that will use this widget. Now under the onMounted lifecycle method, let's do the same thing by adding a template literal and pass this that history date picker ID. Finally, in the template, let's add a dynamic ID by using t at directive and pass the class field day picker ID. Go back and reload. Click each date. And yes, it's working fine. Now check the delivery date. It's working fine, but it's not properly aligned. To solve this, let's simply wrap this input field with a div having a class position relative. Go back and reload. Check the delivery date. And yes, it's working fine. Now let's render read only fields too by adding t if condition props that read only, add a span, and output the getter method formatted value. Otherwise, render the date picker. Lastly, let's update the code under the under to update the props value if indeed there's an initial date value. Go back and reload. Under the delivery date, click and don't select any date. Okay, the save button is not showing. Let's try to delete the quotation date. Yes, it's working fine. Finally, let's cancel. All right, the read only is working as well. And that's it guys for this tutorial. I hope you learned something from this. I know there's a challenge here since it doesn't render the time value. Unfortunately, this library doesn't support the time value. 
If you know some, you can try the same method I use here or if you have a better method, you can leave your comments below. Thank you guys and see you next time.